So, I think one of the hardest things about having dyspraxia is always having to be in the dark about it. So garbage puns aside, I think one of the biggest angles that I've always mentioned in this YouTube channel is how I've always tried to hide my dyspraxia and how difficult it is to do that. And it's important to understand why we hide dyspraxia. But on top of that, it's also important to understand how we can actually explain dyspraxia to others and how we can bring some sense of awareness. Because one of the biggest problems with dyspraxia and just mental health and cognitive health in general in the vast broad of things is just a misunderstanding on both sides. See, I mentioned multiple times on this channel how dyspraxia is a relatively invisible illness, a lot like IBS or chronic fatigue syndrome. And so a lot of people really can't tell just by looking at you, but when you start doing silly things like knocking things over unintentionally or being unable to catch things or maybe even eating stupidly to some extent, and I mean stupidly as a general term, I'm not insulting the way people eat. When you go to try to explain yourself or say, oh, hey, I'm dyspraxic and being open about it, a lot of people get confused. They're like, well, what does that mean? And well, you can try to explain it all you want, but at the same time, it's really hard to explain what exactly dyspraxia is. See, it's a disorder that affects so many things, both small and big, but it's not one chronic issue that affects strictly one part of the body. Balance and coordination actually play a large role in how people go through day-to-day -day life. Everything from just taking a walk to even just memorizing things. A lot of us have really terrible short-term memory. I've done a couple videos on that. So the problem when explaining it to people is just deciding how you're going to do it. The best way to explain it is to put it into terms that other people can understand. Seeing as how dyspraxia is a disorder, it, it basically is something that everybody faces to some extent. It's just that with us, it's amplified. Everybody's walked into a room and then completely forgot why they walked into that room or opened the fridge and completely forgot why they opened the fridge. Everyone's tripped over their feet once or twice and everybody kind of sucks at catching from time to time. It's just more about reminding people that instead of that happening once in a while like it happens for everyone else, it seems to be an everyday, almost every hour on the hour kind of thing for us. The other important distinction to make is whether or not we're on the autism spectrum, and that's always a really hard thing, because even most psychiatrists and psychologists can't really agree on whether we're on the spectrum or whether we're not on the spectrum. A lot of people like myself really don't show any other signs of being on the autism spectrum, and so we just get the diagnosis of dyspraxia and left at that. The two terms aren't really mutually exclusive though, so there are plenty of people who do have autism and also have dyspraxia, and they do have other, you know, semblances of autism. For instance, one of the more common disorders associated with dyspraxia is ADHD, which is considered a part of the autism spectrum. But I'm really going to save all these points for um, another video later on because I do want to talk more in depth on autism in general. But, but for the time being, it's, it's important to remember that you can't really just throw it off and say, oh, hey, I'm on the autism spectrum because that may or may not be fully correct. And you don't want to start spreading misinformation even if you don't intend to. As Dr. Phil has said multiple times, no matter how flat you make a pancake, there's always two sides. And I think that's another big problem with dyspraxia is a lot of us get annoyed and angry when people don't understand or don't respect, you know, how a disorder affects us. And so they chalk it up as just being lazy or not being fully developed or being stupid. And while it's understandable to be strongly offended by that, it does hurt to receive that kind of feedback from time to time. It's also important to remember that a lot of people are afraid of what they don't understand. 
and a lot of people find it easier to find the simplest answer. It's Occam's razor, essentially. And so when someone's put in a position where their strongly held beliefs are challenged, for instance, anti-vaxxers, flat earthers, etc., or even just people in general, every single one of us has a cognitive bias and that confirmation bias, which, you know, there's a million YouTube videos explaining, so I'm not going to get into it. But the point being, when you do have a very strongly held belief, it's very hard to change your mind on that belief unless you go through the proper channels of actually having a proper debate and properly informing people. There's a lot of ignorance in the world, but that ignorance doesn't just stem from people being people. It stems from a cognitive bias that almost all of us have absolutely no control over. And so while it's a bit disconcerting to have people not really understand your plight, it is also somewhat understanding looking from their viewpoint and trying to look from within their shoes and see why they believe what they believe. If you watch how we move and how we talk and everything, it seems like for the most part we're just typical people who are just a little bit more clumsy when if you actually took the time to look at it from our perspective, this is a debilitating disorder that affects our everyday quality of life to an extreme amount. So a couple of tips when explaining this to people is to just try to put it in as simple terms as possible. And that's another really hard thing with dyspraxia, as I've mentioned in my social life video. When we talk, especially about something we're passionate about, we tend to go on and on and on. Many of us develop really strong language skills as a way to compensate for a lack of physical skill or a lack of cognitive skill. Uh, me especially. And a lot of people when they don't care about an issue or aren't particularly interested in an issue don't really want to sit and listen to a lecture about that issue. So trying to bring it into passing or pique that curiosity, like if someone says, oh, hey, why'd you do that? Or whatever, just say, oh, I'm dyspraxic. And they'll be like, what? And then they'll eventually ask questions and just let it happen fluidly throughout conversation instead of going off on a tangent. And I understand that's really hard, especially with dyspraxia, but you know, you can try to manage it into little bite-sized pieces, little fun fact kind of things. And, you know, trying to interlace it within conversation without making it an overbearing part or the main topic of the conversation. It'll make it a lot easier to digest for people to understand and eventually word will pass on and hopefully things can come together and to a more concise picture, if that makes sense. I don't want to give myself a shameless plug, so I'm going to mention another YouTuber who I always mention in my videos because I love her videos and I wish she would start making content again. Uh, Crystal Bella Shaw has some really good videos on dyspraxia. I believe my videos are somewhat informative, I've been told. I appreciate the positive feedback. But just sending someone a YouTube clip, whether it's mine, whether it's Crystal Bella Shaw's, whether it's one of the other people who do videos on dyspraxia. I know there's a couple more people where, you know, the sole content of their channel isn't dyspraxia, but they'll do a quick video on it. And any kind of informative video that breaks it down in an informative but easily digestible way will be um, you know, just good. And, and a lot of people who watch YouTube on a regular usually watch it in a podcast way, like they'll play Minecraft or they'll do something productive and play it in the background. So even if you just suggest it as like a podcast thing, especially my videos in Crystal Bella Shaw's where there aren't a lot of images and you don't have to be constantly watching the screen. They can just put one of our videos on in the background and just listen to it while they're doing something else and at least get some fun facts and some informative info. I actually have a whole playlist on this channel dedicated to dyspraxia and so does she. So, you know, just, just a thing to consider. And also a lot of people do prefer to get their education from YouTube channels because apparently someone talking to a camera is a lot more genuine to some people than actually hearing it from the mouth of another person. I don't know any of the science behind that, so don't ask me. I'm just a gas station employee. Another important thing to remember is who you inform and the timing in which you inform them. For instance, if you are in, say, school, whether it be high school or college, 
trying to have a parent or another adult explain it to a professor or a teacher as opposed to you. I guess with a professor, it is better coming from you. But if, say, you're in high school or middle school and you're trying to explain it to a teacher, a teacher is going to understand it more coming from a parent or a psychologist than coming from you. It's gonna, they're gonna respect the opinion more. Not that they don't respect your opinion as a student, but as someone who is young and still developing, you know, we're all stupid as kids. So it's understandable for them to find it harder to believe coming from a student as opposed to a parent or psychologist. Uh, as opposed to if you're in college and trying to explain it to a professor, most professors don't really seem to care about that kind of thing anyway and really aren't going to target you out. Now, this varies from college to college, and of course, I'm in the U.S., and my college that I'm at is online, so not really much I can do there. When bringing it up at a workplace or, you know, in some kind of professional setting where you're going to need your needs being met and understood, at least to some extent, so you're not getting yelled at for things that you literally have no control over. It's always important to make sure that at least somebody rather close to the top, you don't have to go straight to corporate because corporate will then try to take some measures and you could even be discriminated against to some point. Not that it's legal and if you are being discriminated against, please get a lawyer and get that taken care of. But, you know, a lot of places do have loopholes and... You know, you just want to be vigilant about who you tell in a professional setting. But if you're close to your manager, your manager at least, or some supervisor within, you know, the direct chain of command that isn't strictly corporate. Because even if corporate can do something, there's only so much they can do because they're binded to specific rules. Your manager will be able to at least give you some more personalized care or at least work with your schedule in a way that you know, uh, affects and helps out your situation. And I'm not saying you have to be goody-goody with your manager either. You don't have to be best friends. You don't have to be a brown noser, but at least be sociable enough that when you actually come out to them, they'll be understanding to your feelings or at least have some kind of assistant manager or someone who is a direct line of contact who can give you some semblance of comfort and cater to whatever specific needs that you need to be met because we still can be productive despite our disability. I mean, many of us are. Many of us become famous authors and actors and writers. It's even been postulated that Albert Einstein may have been dyspraxic, but they just didn't know what it was back then. But overall, I mean, one of the biggest things that I always bring up in my videos is having that close social connection and that support group. And as long as you can maintain some semblance of a support group, whether it's just a close person, like a supervisor, work friend, as well as a close friend and a, possibly a psychologist, if possible, or even just a family physician, although a family physician can only do so much with dyspraxia, but regardless, having a specific support system that is a close network of people who at least understand your plight will at least make your life a little bit easier, at least that much easier than it would be if you tried to hide it like I did for so many years. The thing about dyspraxia, one of the hardest things, and part of why it's taken me forever to release another video, because... I've actually moved out. I, I just came back to my mom's house recently and I get a lot more inspiration to do dyspraxia videos here for some reason. But regardless, one of the biggest problems with dyspraxia and trying to explain it is, you, you know, it's, it's hard to explain. It really is. And it's really hard to bring some kind of understanding to other people when it's something that you and the entire psychological medical community can barely understand to the full extent ourselves. So, you know, it, it is hard. And I would also suggest, and I, I actually just picked up this book not too long ago. It's called Caged in Chaos. And I am not, you know, promoting a book. This isn't a, you know, advertising video or anything. But when I was in high school, my uh, mom actually got this and she used to um, give my teachers a copy of this. It was weird. It kind of 
disconcerting, but I mean, not many of my classmates knew it was my mom who gave them this. And you would see them reading this. It was interesting. But it actually helped me a lot through my school career. And I mean, I'm sure reading this, uh, I've just read the first couple pages already. And it almost like speaks to me, kind of. It's weird. But if you know any book nerds or anyone who's really into reading or whatever, and you want to give them some understanding of what you're going through, this is actually some pretty good reading, at least from my opinion. And I'm not a big book reviewer, so I can't really suggest it or give a proper rating or anything or a proper review. But as someone with dyspraxia who is still trying to understand what I'm going through in some way, it's really helpful, although parts of it also can't really agree on whether or not dyspraxia is on the autism spectrum. It's important to remember that this book is still rather old. I mean, it was around when I was in high school, first published in 2005. So, you know, it is somewhat dated. And if you can find a better or more efficient book, or if I can find one, I'll definitely plug it. But for the time being, especially because it's what I'm reading now, I would heavily suggest this book if you want to share it or just read it yourself, definitely check it out. And again, this isn't a sponsored video. I just I just started reading this and couldn't help but share it. Uh, one of the biggest problems I've been having recently is just adapting to adult life uh, ever since I moved out, especially with dyspraxia. And that's probably one of the biggest helps I've had, although it talks more about like dealing with it in high school. It still gives you some insight into just how much other people can relate to your plight and just how bad it can be for some people as compared to yours. So, you know, not only is it a little humbling, but it's also helpful. And to hear that from another person, I think one of the biggest reasons why my channel and Crystal Bella Shaw's and all these other channels get all these giant amounts of views. I mean, I share on Reddit, so that's probably part of it too. But, you know, a lot of people do find comfort in seeing another person who's going through what they're going through because then they realize that they're not alone in the world. And I'm glad that my videos do that for people. I always say I never plan on monetizing these videos because I don't. If I really feel like this channel is worth monetizing, I'll make a Patreon and make it so people can donate if they choose to, but that's only if they choose to. Uh, I feel like these channels, mine, Crystal Bella Shaw's, whatever, um, are some of the most important channels for somebody with dyspraxia because they do show a face behind what we suffer. And they do show that there are definitely people out there who go through this every day, just like you do watching this video or just like anyone you share this video with who may have dyspraxia or whatever. You know, and it really shows a, a personal human side as opposed to one of these science videos or the Dyspraxia Foundation videos where, yes, it's informative and, yes, it brings awareness, but it's not really showing the human side of it. And if you are looking to share my videos or Crystal Bella Shaw's videos, I can't say specifically for her channel, but again, I have a whole Dyspraxia playlist. So if you're really going to use my videos. I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. But if you are going to use my videos to explain dyspraxia to other people, I would suggest a dyspraxia playlist. Maybe leave out the cannabis with dyspraxia one, depending on who you're telling. Please. I don't want my grandma to find that one. But that's it for this video. I'm sorry. It's been a long time since I've uploaded. It's just ever since I moved out, it's been hard. <laughs> so I, I'm actually planning a video, I've been planning a video, it's just the existential crisis of adult life on top of dyspraxia makes it hard to record and edit. But I have been working on a video about adulting with dyspraxia, when it's like actually being an independent in the world while dealing with dyspraxia. And I hope to release that video soon, but I can't make any promises especially with how busy it's been at work and relying on work specifically to live. It's, it's kind of hard to deal with on top of the depression and anxiety that comes with dyspraxia and everything else. So I'll try to get that video out as soon as possible. I appreciate that I've actually been getting 
more subscribers even in the past month that I haven't uploaded. So, I mean, that's awesome. Thank you, everyone, for subscribing. I appreciate the support. It really means a lot. But, um, yeah, I, I'm really more here to help people and give some understanding and awareness to dyspraxia. I'm glad to help you guys. And, uh, well, that's all for this video. I'm going to stop talking now. You guys have a good one.